That's Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, I will try not to repeat uh, any of the ideas in the two excellent presentations we heard from Khan and uh, from uh, Professor Mosadian, unless I disagree with some of the ideas, then I will mention it. Uh, I'm, I'm more or less now focused on the prospects of the ongoing process. Uh, the history we know, we have different opinions about it, different criticism of things that happened, ideas about what the zone should look like. But I'm mainly now concerned with the prospects of the process that is going uh, uh, with this uh, annual meeting or conference uh, that hopefully should create a treaty for the zone. I get many questions uh, uh, in the last few months uh, about these prospects. Do I think the, this process is feasible? Is it an exercise in futility or anything would come out of it? Of course, these are very valid questions. But let me tell you, let me say that my opinion is at the best of times, the Middle East security issues and uh, non-proliferation issues are problematic. We all know that, and we all know why, whether for uh, 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 internal regional reasons or for external interferences and the role of external powers in, these, in the setup of the region. But now, in this decade or these times, uh, the international community is witnessing almost, from my point of view, total chaos from the impact of the pandemic to uh, 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 an almost uh, similar Cold War environment and uh, multilateral disarmament machinery has run out of energy and is on the verge of collapse in many uh, areas. So within this environment, of course, the Middle East issue becomes more problematic than it, is, it usually is. Still, we are not giving up on that, at least in some parts of the region. Uh, people think that this is a very important uh, issue. Actually, it is the only uh, uh, comprehensive uh, uh, approach to uh, regional security and to disarmament in the region that does not allow for uh, uh, the uh, usual uh, uh, piecemeal uh, and selective approach that uh, uh, has been used in the past. Now, so what is it that we expect out of the coming uh, uh, conference? Or well, at least I hope some of these ideas would be in the minds of those who are taking the decision in, in the conference. They have to take a decision, I think, if they want this process to survive, to move forward. Not to go into the motions of holding a yearly conference where they have political declarations and, and so on, and then forget about it for the, for the rest of the year until they meet again in the next year. The international community would, would be very critical if this happens. What I think should do is that they should just take a decision to have certain intersessional activities. Probably or mostly in the form of open-ended uh, working groups. Of course, I, I would propose four main uh, uh, working groups. Three of them are obvious, it's about elaborating the modalities for monitoring and verification uh, uh, for each weapon system and provide the decision makers of the region who are uh, doing with uh, uh, several options. What is it that they, they can do regarding the monitoring and verification, whether at the international level, uh, level or at the regional level? So we have these three working open-ended groups. What I am I think would be a very good idea also, from my point of view, is to have a working group that would investigate and collect 
the requirements for regional capacity building uh, 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 in the areas where uh, the treaty and the, of, of the zone would require regional expertise. So they need to decide what expertise are needed, what is available of this expertise in the region, and what is uh, 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 required, maybe devise a plan, uh, uh, an action plan uh, for capacity building. The region lacks a lot of uh, 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 the expertise needed to get this, to have regional ownership of, of the zone if it ever uh, uh, takes uh, place. So uh, if they can set up these or uh, uh, working groups and support them by expertise from the relevant international organizations and from regional experts as well. They can uh, uh, put at the table, at the next meeting, certain ideas that they can all agree upon and move forward. Move forward in two ways. From also, these are just. I'm thinking aloud actually on that. They need to report the progress they are doing to all international, relevant international arenas, mainly the, uh, uh, the uh, General Assembly, the Review Conference, the IAEA General Conference. And there are ways to report, even if some would block this kind of reporting, there are different ways they can get away with that. And they report specific progress in specific uh, uh, areas. Uh, the uh, the second issue, which it's an idea that I'm thinking about, because many of the states of the region believe that there, we cannot have a zone without uh, Israel uh, uh, party to it. I think we need to look at the model of the CTBTO where you have uh, a, a treaty that is not in, in, in uh, it is not ratified, but yet there is an organization working on the issue. So we can have some sort of a look at this model and see what is suitable for the region. Because I know for sure that the treaty will not uh, uh, be ratified unless Israel is part of it and Iran is part of it and certain Arab states as well. So the CTBT model could be useful of having a treaty that is not ratified, yet we have some sort of a mechanism that is working and developing uh, 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 certain uh, formulas. Um, these are basically the ideas I'm looking for in order for the uh, conference uh, 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 can express its intentions to the rest of the international community that it's moving forward with ideas, it's going along without compromising their own security interests as well, because otherwise uh, 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 it would be meaningless uh, if you have certain parties uh, in the region uh, joining the treaty while others are free to do whatever they want again. Now, one last comment before I, 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 I leave this. It's on what uh, uh, Hussein uh, Musabian uh, mentioned about um, we need to ask the uh, uh, nuclear weapon states to give up their double standard approaches and not to politicize the, uh, uh, the process. Um, I, I, I uh, Although I agree with the principle, it's not feasible. They will not do that. So we need to ignore. We need to move forward without uh, focusing on these double standards and uh, politicization and work through or around these approaches. And if the conference can move forward with specific ideas and work intersessionally and put at the table of the international uh, uh, arena, uh, uh, Fora uh, products that they have come to agree upon. Uh, I think the momentum for the uh, for 
the zone will increase at the international, the unsupport will increase at the international level. Uh, that's basically the main ideas I've been uh, looking around. What is what are the prospects? What can we do? It's it can be very confusing at some times because of the general environment of multilateral disarmament that is collapsing all over and of the specific nature of the Middle East. Yet, in spite of that, I think there are uh, uh, ways to move forward and we need to support the decision makers of, of the countries of the region who are there by ideas, by papers. The civil society and research center, they need to give and push certain ideas to uh, those guys, because um, I know that some of them would like to move forward, but they have no idea how to how to do that. Uh, I think the, the civil society and the research centers and the think tanks should provide specific uh, 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 components for uh, uh, moving forward on these uh, different issues. Uh, thank you.